Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll go over how to answer the STEM affirmative. First, we'll go through the parts of the affirmative one by one, from inherency and solvency through the global warming, disease, and competitiveness advantages. Then we'll talk about some turns available to the negative, how to use off-case arguments, and then walk through how to do this speech by speech. As a reminder, affirmative cases have several important pieces. The inherency, which describes the problem and how it exists now. The plan, which is what the federal government should do about it. The solvency, which is how the plan will work. And the advantages, why we should do the plan. The affirmative has to win that their plan is a good idea, which means having advantages, and that it will work in order to win the debate. Defensive arguments against solvency and advantages can be helpful, but offensive arguments answering the question, why not try, are also necessary for the negative to win. First, let's talk about inherency. The affirmative argues in this case that while there are existing programs to support STEM, they are not doing their job. Specifically, these programs aren't big enough and need more money to be effective. The negative has an array of options here, including efforts by the Obama and Trump administrations to expand STEM programs in the status quo. On solvency, the affirmative will argue that there are many ways to increase STEM education, and there are many different programs that are already tackling some of the problem. The negative has an array of options to attack the solvency of the affirmative, including arguments that say that funding for STEM doesn't actually work and arguments that say that funding on STEM trades off with other areas or from creating well-rounded students necessary to succeed in business and life. The Clean Tech Advantage argues that we need more STEM graduates to push the clean tech sector forward to solve global warming. The negative in this case focuses on the impact debate about global warming, arguing that it isn't real, that it is inevitable, and that humans can adapt to the worst impacts of global warming. The disease advantage argues that humans are vulnerable to infectious diseases and we need STEM graduates to invent cures and vaccines. The negative has an array of potential answers from saying that humans are prepared and resilient, so disease is not a big threat, and that focusing on these pandemics trades off with systemic illnesses like cancer, which actually kill and cause more suffering than the occasional pandemic. On the economic competitiveness advantage, the affirmative will argue that the U.S. needs more STEM graduates to push our economy forward and keep up with the rest of the world. The negative has an array of arguments, going from the uniqueness, which shows that we are not falling behind now, arguing that STEM won't help and that we need more well-rounded graduates, arguing that STEM and innovation and that competitiveness and and education are not related, and also arguing that teenagers don't really care about STEM, regardless of how much money we spend on it. Let's talk a little bit about turns. These are an opportunity to add offense against the affirmative while debating on case. The negative has several options here. That STEM trades off with foreign language learning, that STEM focus hurts minorities, women, and the poor, and that STEM encourages standardized testing and the formulaic education model that that entails. Off-case arguments are an integral part of a negative strategy, allowing you to bring offense to your side of the debate. First, the spending disadvantage. Establishing a link is key. This could be arguments like a STEM focus will require more teachers with advanced degrees, and in order to lure them into teaching, you'll have to pay them well. It could say that STEM focus will require more chemistry and physics labs, specialized equipment, computers, and other expensive hardware. And it can also argue that STEM money is spent ineffectively, hurting the solvency and making it more expensive in the process. Once you've established a link, you'll have to win the impact debate, comparing your impacts to the affirmative, such as terrorism and disease, etc. Topicality is the other off-case position in the novice packet. However, not all topicality arguments will work against this affirmative. Topicality is substantial. The program won't really impact the most students, or it won't really cost a lot of money, 
are just not good arguments against an affirmative that addresses some of the core subjects every student takes in school. However, it can be useful if you're trying to win a link to the spending disadvantage. Forcing the affirmative to describe exactly how substantial their program is guarantees you a link. Topicality increase versus create. The plan doesn't create any new programs, so you're out of luck here. At Topicality Education, the existing definition includes curriculum adjustments, which is what a STEM program would be, so it's unlikely that you'll be able to win this argument either. So how do we answer the affirmative? First, let's talk about the first negative constructive. It's important to have a coherent plan going into the speech. Don't just start reading random cards from the evidence packet. Reading a spending disadvantage, potentially topicality, and some combination of turns and solvency and inherency takeouts against the affirmative are a sound strategy. This should, is more of an on-case focus than a, your strategy against the voucher's affirmative. This diverse strategy gives you options later in the debate. In the block, it's important to remember to divide and conquer. Debaters should address different arguments in their speeches. For example, the 2NC could take the spending disadvantage and topicality while the 1NR takes case, or the 2NC could take case and the 1NR could take the spending disadvantage. First, outline your position. Second, make sure you answer all of the 2AC arguments. And third, remember to add offense. The more arguments you can make in the block, the harder it is to answer everything in the first affirmative rebuttal. In the 2NR, you should choose just one coherent group of arguments to go for. Here are some examples. Just the spending disad. The spending disad and some solvency attacks. Inherency solvency and offensive case turns. It's important to tell the story of your negative position, having a two-sentence overview to explain how your positions work together. Answering any 1AR arguments that the affirmative made against arguments you are actually going to go for and answering offense should be the bulk of your speech. And lastly, do impact calculus. Why should the judge care about your impacts and why should they value them more than the affirmative impacts? In the JV division, the plan text of the affirmative case must remain the same and give the negative some predictability. This means that most of your answers will still work, but the affirmative might have new reasons to support the plan or additional solvency research. However, you can do new research as well to improve your arguments and add new weapons to your toolbox. New solvency or inherency arguments can show how the affirmative is unneeded or ineffective. New advantage answers can get rid of their offense or provide you with some offense of your own. These advantages are very vulnerable to being turned. New evidence on case can help you answer common affirmative additions and new links to off-case arguments can help you generate offense.